All right, so welcome to session 38 uh, of School 16 of our weekly event series. Uh, today's session is with McLean Herrera, project manager at Facebook, and we're going to dig into a lot of stuff uh, from the story, but specifically we'll also talk about how to prepare for interviews at companies like Facebook and how to network your way into opportunities at larger organizations. Uh, if you haven't been to a School 16 event before, and you're wondering who are these two bearded guys that I'm hearing from for the first time. Uh, we are the founding directors here at School 16. We're also identical twin brothers. That's why we look the same. I will say I grew the beard first and Sergey copied me. For those of you that have come to multiple events, you've heard me say that before and I will scream it from the rooftops. Uh, but School 16 is an organization that helps people uh, learn and develop their skills specifically to advance non-technical careers in tech. Uh, and our agenda for today is pretty straightforward. Uh, this is our introduction right here. We'll be done in a couple of minutes. Uh, we'll hear uh, an opener and introduction from McLean on how she started her career and how she got into big tech and an operations related role. Uh, and then we'll have a deeper dive into the topic of today, which is again, how to make sure you're putting your best foot forward for these opportunities and actually even getting your foot in the door for opportunities in big tech companies and what they look for. And as always, we wanna make sure that your questions are heard. Uh, specific questions are prioritized. So do think about that throughout the conversation and uh, we'll make sure to answer them as we're going through this event. Uh, just a quick announcement before we get started. Um, we have, uh, if, especially if you're looking to advance your career in tech, and again, especially around non-technical roles, we do encourage you to apply to our selective eight-week career acceleration program that's starting in August. Uh, we'll get to learn directly from professionals like McLean that are working in the field. You get to learn uh, about all these different roles and develop those skills through a rotational eight-week experience. And the deadline to apply to that is coming up uh, right at the end of the month here, July 30th. So within a week, uh, and we do prioritize scholarships for early applicants. So you're encouraged to apply school 16.co forward slash apply if you're interested in diving a little bit deeper. And of course, we encourage you to continue to come to these events to get uh, a lot more insight. That's the best way we believe uh, to learn is from practitioners like McLean. And at the end, we're gonna have a survey for folks that wanna get access to this video. Anything uh, else, Sergey, that I missed? No, I think that's great. And we're ready to get started here. And, uh, and I did catch someone here mentioned, Naman mentioned that he, like, he would like to hear uh, some more precise information and parameters uh, about how to land a job at uh, one of the FANG companies, right? Facebook, Amazon, Google. What does the end stand for? Netflix, I guess. Uh, so one of those types of companies. So uh, that, is, that is part of what we're gonna be covering here today. So first off, um, welcome, McLean. Thank you for joining us here today and sharing your insights. We're, we're excited to have you. I would love to get a, a little bit of an understanding of how you found yourself in tech. I, can, I, I know that you have a, a bachelor's in electronics and telecommunications from your, from your home country. So tell me a little bit about how you found yourself in a technology career. Okay, first off, thank you so much for having me here. It's an uh, opportunity. I mean, I've always trying to find ways in where I could give back to the community and help everybody else who's actually helped me through the process. And I found, let me start with School 16. Uh, to talk and share a little bit about myself, I have had an engineering background. I've completed an undergrad, uh, I've completed my undergrad studies in electronics and telecommunication. And after the first job that I got after my undergrad studies was into project management. And even though it was a telecommunication organization, I realized my interests uh, started leading towards project management. And even if I was enthusiastic and passionate about learning about network architecture, the evolution of all the network architectures that we've had so far, I realized I enjoyed more about managing things around networks. And that's when I realized that I wanted to get into project management. Uh, necessarily into the tech world because I didn't want to let go of technology and engineering completely. And I wanted to pursue my master's and that's how I landed at NYU with my master's in management of technology. During that time, I got an opportunity to intern with Red Hat as a TPM and I understood how project management is different from technical project management. 
and uh, during uh, during my internship i got to learn a lot about project management and i believe that experience has taught me a lot and finally here i am find uh, i mean the job that i have at facebook as a project manager is an uh, amalgamation of everything that i've done so far um, my undergrad studies in networking thereafter my project management skills from my experience back in india which was in a networking firm and finally right now i am working as a project manager at one of their data centers and it's more to do with respect to the telecommunication networks and network architecture and having them build up so that's a little bit about what i have done in the past and how it all uh, accumulates to what i am today <laughs> Great, thank you for that. Uh, thank you for that quick background. Um, my my first question to you: You actually just mentioned, uh, you know, you learned the difference in some of those internships and the jobs that you've had between project management and technical project management. Can you give us a little insight into what those differences are? Yeah. So during my, I mean, I was just exploring what I actually wanted, and I realized that technical project management is more about knowing the technicalities and actually handling a technical project. Whereas project manager is just a simple project which just which does not necessarily need you to go into the technicalities in order to understand what your field engineers or maybe your software engineers are doing, and. as i learned that even what i'm doing right now is kind of a technical project management it's just that it's into networking and if you compare technical project management in the traditional organizations with respect to software you will need to have certain experience with respect to the team you are involved in for example if you're a tpm in a uh, in a eda team which is the enterprise data and analytics you need to have a background of analytics understand the tools they use even if not in detail a uh, overview of what kind of tools are used what your software engineers would be working in is extremely important while you are when you are a project manager you might not necessarily need that level of detail and level i mean you might not be involved as such in those technical decisions but might need a a slight background with respect to that so that's what i've realized how technical project management and program or project management is different hmm yeah that makes a lot of sense now you know when it comes to let's say somebody is not as technical and they want to mm -hmm. break into a project management job you know maybe they have they have a they have an internship that they're doing in a technology company or they're in their first job when you think back to the first job that you had or maybe some of the internships that you had while you were doing your graduate program What would you say to that person if they were if they were to focus on developing particular skills to be attractive mm -hmm. to an employer as a project manager, not necessarily a technical project manager, but as a project manager in general for a tech company? What would you focus on in terms of skills development? I think when it comes to starting your career in project management or maybe even shifting your career it's very important that you have the attitude that things are going to take time to achieve what you actually want because when it comes to role which are not very technical people usually look for experience and what I did I mean I believe I've got to learn through all the applications and interviews that I've given that I underestimated every small project that I participated in and I believe once I take took time to actually uh, i mean jot down all the projects that i've done so far whether it be as small as an academic assignment or as big as a capstone project taking into consideration all of these projects sitting down and as many uh, many of my uh, communities mentioned that uh, you need to frame a star uh, concept around each of these assignments so that you are able to explain the situation the task at hand and everything else in accordingly but i believe in addition to this the one one more addition additional thing that has helped me throughout is to understand those projects in detail but also evaluate the improvements that i would add at a later stage so i think that is very important and if i would have done it at an earlier stage i feel that i would have done better so that is one of the most important things having the attitude that is going to take time but spending proper amount of time by not uh, maybe um, underestimating the assignments that you've done uh, adding the improvements to all of these assignments and uh, giving some time to understand things that you could have done better is very important uh, 
going through the documentations like platforms like PMI, the, these platforms really help to understand uh, how can a project manager behave in a certain situation. For example, if it's, if it's with respect to conflict resolution or risk analysis or any such of any of these particular areas of project management, you could just go into PMI platforms and have a look of how project managers who have had a lot of experience handle certain kind of situations. So even if you're not getting direct experience in a organization, you're getting to understand and learn from others' experience. Networking is the other thing that has helped a lot. I mean, even if um, you're not able to get as much experience, talking to people helps a lot. I believe I had uh, initially underestimated the value of a mentor. And eventually I realized how important it is have it is to have a mentor in your life. And I went, I actually was fortunate enough to find a mentor with whom I worked for two years and he has helped me throughout my process. He works as a project manager and he actually guided me to let me know that how things could uh, not necessarily be the way, the way you want, but you'll eventually reach there. So I think having a cheerleader throughout your journey helps a lot as well. So I think these are few of the things that I believe if I realized earlier, I could have done much better. Hmm. Yes, uh, thank you for sharing that. There's a lot to unpack here. And I do wanna get to how you manage to, to network your way into some of these opportunities um, in a minute here, because I mean, you did, you did something really hard. You moved from another country uh, with zero network, I imagine, and you had to figure out how to navigate a, a completely new environment. So I wanna get into that in about a second. But I want to touch on something you just mentioned, which I think is so important. People typically tend to undersell um, the, some of this project type of experience that they may have during school, in between jobs, and they maybe don't even mention them at all when they're going through an interview process when they're talking to a company. Can you give me an example of you know, a project that maybe you did while you were in school or whatever project you might think of that ended up being a really valuable one to talk about when it came to an interview process. We will get into more detail about the interview process specifically mm -hmm. at Facebook, but I'm just curious, you know, what is the kind of story that you pulled from in terms of a side project that you worked on that people were impressed by? Mm -hmm. There are two most important projects that I've been asked about, I mean, repeatedly in almost all of my interviews. First was with respect to my on-campus work that I worked at NYU for. And the second one was uh, an assignment that I did for my project management class. It had a catchy name and hence many of my interviewers end up, ended up asking, what did you actually do? It seems very interesting. So that was something that I never really valued because I thought, oh my God, it's just an assignment that I'm doing with a couple of my friends and we're just learning a tool and we're just exploring and creating something absolutely basic. But then I was asked in my interviews about it. I was shocked how much value that one project added. And when I went on to explain how that simple idea, um, which we thought of as a group and went on to complete the project, uh, but by considering each of the project management life cycle in mind and how interesting it was to my interviewer. And that's when I realized that but I shouldn't underestimate any of the projects that I've done so far and add all of them and highlight what I've done in each of the stages. So I think that was one of the projects. And the second that I mentioned was my on-campus work. Um, my on-campus work was primarily based on creating dashboards, uh, considering multiple stakeholders in mind. Now, when we think about project management, we completely ignore the fact that uh, project management also has the analytics and reporting aspect. And that's also very important. Some people feel that when you go into extreme technical, you would not be able to show your project management skill. While if you go completely project management, you would not be able to show your technical skills. I think a blend of the two. And if you're not ready to code, and if you do not feel comfortable enough to code, I think being open to learning all of those things and maybe uh, trying to be a part of communities which help you learn small things like creating visualization dashboard helps a lot. So I think that is the two takeaway of all of the interviews that I've had so far and the emphasis that uh, they've had on these two assignments throughout my resume. And that's what helped me to, I mean, create a connect with my interviewers. 
I love that. Um, and, you know, I think that's very common for folks to underestimate the fact that, you know, these projects, these side projects uh, can be very impactful when you talk about them. And if you know how to talk about them uh, with yeah. employers, <laughs> which, which I do want to touch on uh, here in a few minutes of how you actually talked about them. But um, before we get into that and the actual interview process, you know, I am curious to hear, you mentioned that having a mentor was really key to you. And uh, when I spoke to you, Last week, in preparation for this conversation, you mentioned that you know, learning how to build relationships within different mm -hmm. companies was was instrumental for your success and being able to land a job at Facebook. Because by the time you interviewed at Facebook, you already had so many conversations, so many interviews that you felt ready. Talk to me about how you actually ran the process of developing your network. Like, what did you actually do to get people to help you? Uh, I think. Uh... Everything depends on how comfortable you are and you should be ready to be uh, okay with uh, sending cold messages to people who are actually looking forward to hire someone new. So being able to cold message is your first step. Um, if you send out 10 messages, at least one of them might reply, might respond with maybe interest in having mentoring you. So maybe that is the first step and that's what I did. Uh, send out cold messages and maybe I send out 10 to 15 messages per day, but I saw to it that I curated my messages. I didn't just send out messages uh, at one single template and I sent it out to everybody. I tried my best to curate it, understand the person and then send out messages because when you, when the opposite person sees that you are actually interested and you've taken the time to research about them, what they've been doing so far and accordingly created a message that helps them connect with you and in a, in a way helps them to know more about you and that leads to the fact that they would actually help you. So that is the strategy that I used. But the second thing that was most important for me was uh, I said yes to all of my interviews, irrespective I was interested in that interview or not, because I treated all of these interviews as an opportunity to let go of my fear of first of all uh, speaking with people getting to uh, i mean letting go of the fear of uh, maybe coming up with impromptu questions that i could ask at the end of the interviews and it's very important that you treat each of your interview individually and not keep a bias of a previous interview with the same organization and treat each interview as an opportunity to learn more from the opposite person. So I think that has helped me a lot. Having gone through so many interviews, I realized that uh, I, I was at a stage wherein I was very confident enough to speak with strangers, uh, uh, try to know more about them, ask questions about uh, things that I felt that I wanted to know more about, even if it was an interview. So I think that was the second most important thing that helped me frame my strategy. And also uh, the third most important thing is see to it that at the end of your interview, you actually take some time to ask feedback. And it's very difficult to get feedback from people. But even if it's not something that you were looking for, you were expecting, or uh, you do not get a, a go for your next interview, it's very important that you get feedback because uh, even if you are applying for 50 jobs and you realize from 50 jobs you are going into the screen process for maybe five jobs it's not just uh, enough that you are uh, uh, using the count as a metric but also the reason behind why you couldn't convert the other uh, 15 into a screening is also important or maybe the screening into an on-site interview is important so having those things also into the consideration helps a lot Mm, yeah, you almost sound like you you went through the school 16 program and were a star <laughs> student because we have people send cold messages to build up their network as part of the program, actually. And so that's awesome that you had the foresight to do that yourself. And, and, and I'm curious, you know, let's say you reached out to somebody at a company like Facebook and say, hey, I'd love to have a little bit of your time. I, I'd love to, I'm, I'm interested in the project management role at a company like yours, and mm -hmm. I'd love to hear from your experience. Uh, what would you do, let's say, at the end of that conversation to make sure that, you know, you have some sort of next step or how did you ask them to help you maybe at the end of that conversation? I think it's important to build a connection and let them know that you're interested in a role. I mean, you cannot directly ask for a referral or ask them to do favors for you until and unless you um, do not 
build connect and you're not able to prove that you're actually interested in the organization. So having researched about the organization, having researched about the team that you want to be a part of and the domain is very important. So when you speak to that person, uh, if you have researched enough and you speak the language that they are expecting, you would be able to definitely connect and then the opposite person would eventually uh, be interested to let, I mean, they would voluntarily let you know that they would love to help you. And that's what my observation has been so far because research goes a long way, not just of uh, the organization, the team, but also with the person you're speaking about. So I think all of these strategies has helped me uh, uh, create a connect with the opposite person. I think that's very important. Uh, only when you speak the language that the opposite person wants to hear, would they be able to do what you want? So I think that's something which would take practice, but it's not easy, but it takes time. But you'll know when you are there, when uh, you'll be able to uh, connect with the opposite person. Yeah, that's great. And, and how did you know, how did you know whether the connection you made with someone was sufficient enough to maybe ask them for something? Yeah, that's a complicated question. But then I think when you talk to the opposite person, uh, they voluntarily come up with uh, suggestions. That is first thing because nobody can, uh, uh, nobody would actually invest time to give you suggestions, to give you feedback, or maybe to tell you or redirect you in the correct direction until and unless they did not like you. Uh, the only thing that they could do, if they did not like it, they would just say that, I'm sorry, I'm, I couldn't help you as much. I have no idea about this. But if that person was able to connect with you, they would redirect you or they would give you resources to learn better or maybe ask you questions about what you want to learn better. So I think these were a few of the things that helped me identify whether I was able to create a connect with them. and. At a later stage, I went on to ask them if they could refer me for a position. And uh, this is something that I've always been interested in and adding a little more about why that position and how I would add impact to that position is something that I would definitely do. Hmm, I, I love that because you know, you're not just asking for something, you're actually showing your motivation yeah. for asking for it, which is what people care about, that that's what makes them wanna help you. And the fact that you understood that nuance I think is, is, is really critical. Um, I want to spend the next uh, the next few minutes here talking about specifically the interview process, which you touched on a little bit. Um, but I'd love to hear a little bit more about you know one of the things you you told me when we spoke is that by the time you interviewed at Facebook, because you said yes to so many other interviews, you already felt prepared. Talk to me a little bit about what you learned in those interviews that uh, you implemented uh, by the time you got to the interview in Facebook. Yes, I think one of the most simplest but most underestimated value I believe that I've learned through the whole process is having confidence because I believe uh, we reach a stage wherein we get nervous and we feel I just want a job and I just want them to like me and in the race of doing that we become nervous and we start doubting ourselves whether a job is for yourself. So I think the first step is that you um, envision and see your place for yourself in that organization first. Have that confidence that yes, you are supposed to be where you are and it's, it's, it's the right place and you're interviewing with the right organization. They liked you because they saw something in you and they want you there and they're going to be a companion in the process. So I think that's very important. And that's what prepared me the most because by the time I had interviewed with so many other organizations, I realized there's no point being nervous about it. There's no point. Uh, I mean, ultimately you're selling yourself as a product and you have to have all your key points uh, mentioned and you have to be a marketer there. And I think being confident, uh, being confident throughout these interviews have helped me a lot. Um, Asking questions, I think uh, doing research about each of these interviews and understanding the person you're speaking to helps you a lot because you start asking the right questions. When you ask the right questions, you're able to build that connect. Uh, I mean, even if you're not able to answer a few questions during the interview, the last 15 minutes when you ask the right question shows that your interest 
is uh, to the extent that you've researched enough about the person, about the team, about the particular aspect of the interview. And I think that, that could be a game changer. So I think those are all the points that I realized. I mean, the, uh, all through the interviews that I had, finally, when I interviewed with Facebook, I actually implemented those. And also one most important point that I realized was after each of your interview, make it a point that you write everything that you spoke with the person because it helps you analyze the things that you spoke, things that you could have done better for a future interview because uh, we often uh, complete the interview and then we forget about what we were already spoken and we feel that we'll remember things, but that's not the case. So it's better that you document everything because when you document everything and if you get a reject, you are able to go back to that conversation and analyze what might have gone wrong so that you can improve for your next interview. Yeah, so so many really, really good points there. I mean, the confidence thing, I think, is, you know, to, to some extent, people think, well, sure, confidence helps, but, you know, nothing worse than when you, as an employer, when you get on a call with somebody and you think they're a good candidate, you start asking them questions and they give you, like, one-sentence answers mm -hmm. or they are, you know, they feel like they're not qualified for the role and you can kind of sense that through the conversation. They're really kind of just shooting themselves for the foot. So learning how to answer questions in a way that shows the impact you've had to the organization, shows mm -hmm. your motivation, shows your confidence, role-playing, practicing beforehand, mm -hmm. all that stuff really, really helps. Um, and of course, yeah, I mean, again, another small thing and underrated but actually recording what you've done and taking notes on the questions that you've asked will help you not only review and find out what you did wrong, but if you go further in the interview process, it will help you understand what additionally should you ask. It'll help you understand, okay, their answer to my question, if I ask them, you know, tell me about your priorities as an organization, well, there you go, you have a playbook now to tell, tell them in the next interview yes. exactly how you're gonna solve their priorities. Yes. For now, selling yourself based on what they need, which is a, such an important skill set. So I'm glad you mentioned those. They're so, so important. So I'm curious then, you know, let's talk a little bit about your, specifically your interview process at Facebook. Can you maybe give us a little color into what that interview process was like? And if you even can recall some specific questions that you were asked uh, that, you know, people here might benefit from learning if they're preparing for a particular interview at one of these uh, top tier tech companies. How do you even start to prepare for that? How, how can you predict what questions they're going to ask? Uh, unfortunately, since I signed an NDA with Facebook, I, could, I cannot specifically share the questions, but to give an overview of the interview process, um, I, I think earlier I underestimated the value of reference, but reference do help. So um, I got an opportunity to interview with Facebook through a referral and uh, the interview process started with an HR screen. It went on to the hiring manager interview. And after I have the hiring manager interview, I have the on-site interview, which is, um, which is of course virtual for now, but it's called on-site because earlier they would call you to the headquarters and have all the interviews scheduled together. Uh, it's a round of six interviews, which takes place on the same day or maybe divide into two days. And each of these interviews test a single aspect, which they are looking forward to. So the preparation, I mean, uh, the preparation tips for the interview is uh, for, I mean, not just for Facebook, for any other organization, um, I would focus on understanding the values because it's very important that um, you understand the value that the organization follows because ultimately you want to uh, connect with the organization as well. And when you speak, you need to speak that language because if you're not speaking that language, um, you wouldn't qualify the cultural fit interview. So it's very important that uh, you understand the values and you create at least two or three stories to contemplate your life throughout, understand things that you've done which align with those values. Uh, the next step would be to concentrate on each of the aspects that you're being tested for. For example, for project management, it could be collaboration, communication, project management in itself, then the technicalities if it's a TPM role. And maybe, um, yeah, I think these are the most important aspect, but decision making, uh, then you have uh, how comfortable you are with ambiguity. So these are a few things that you'll be tested on. And definitely these are a few things that questions would be asked on. So framing a story or two of each of these could help you because uh, 
um, I I always emphasize that even if your resume, I mean, even if your resume is in the star format and you're able to reflect everything in the star format, when you speak, you should be able to give an additional perspective, which is the improvement that you would add if you had to redo the project. So even if you're giving the result, your next step should be to provide an improvement that you believe uh, could have improved the project even more. So I think that is one of the key aspects that helps you stand out of the crowd because usually people just focus on star and they don't focus on how, um, I mean, being a project manager is important that you give uh, importance to retrospecting each of the projects that you've done because that's what a project manager does. Um, so it's important that you spend some time to understand the improvement and uh, even mention that improvement during your interview. Great, that's really helpful. Thank you for that. Um, you know, uh, and by the way, folks, we have another 20 minutes or so here um, where uh, with our conversation here with McLean, but of course we wanna make sure we're asking specific questions that you might have. So do drop them in the chat. No question is a stupid question. We'll ask anything um, as long as it's relevant to the conversation that we have here at hand. But, you know, I'm, I'm curious then, as you mentioned a couple times now, the importance of having stories that you can pull from, that you can talk about, uh, that are going to demonstrate your, your skill set, demonstrate your understanding of how to solve these problems. And you mentioned how one of the stories you talked about was this project that you worked on mm -hmm. when you were doing your deg degree. Can you talk a little bit about how you talked about that story? If you can give us some insight of how, what level of detail you, you went into to mm -hmm. make sure that the person interviewing you understands that you have that skill set? Okay, uh, I would like to give an example of yet another uh, uh, on my, I, uh, I like to give an example of my on campus work. So I start off by the place that I worked for then and uh, explaining the situation, uh, what difficulties we were facing, that is a task and uh, analyze how we could have improved it and what we actually did and what was the result and finally what improvements i believe we could have done so for example uh, during my role as a graduate assistant with nyu's assessment and institutional research uh, i was tasked with the responsibility of creating dashboards um, which take which took into consideration multiple stakeholders for example the dean uh, the professors assistant professors students and department heads and this dashboard the responsibility of this dashboard was uh, to improve reporting while also maintaining security so that each stakeholder is able to view the reports with respect with, with respect to their specific rules. Uh, the task that uh, was at hand was complicated because uh, security is not something that can be implemented very easily on Tableau. And I went on to implement this entire dashboard on Tableau, which was, uh, of course, a course of steps. It started off with creating a simple layout with just all stakeholders as common. But I went on to develop specific stakeholders and, uh, and added the security levels as well. The result was that we have a dashboard implemented on the NYU server now, which can be accessible by all of the stakeholders. Uh, with the security level implemented. And the improvement that I feel that we could have added for this was um, uh, that to some extent, I feel uh, we could have added a combination of dashboard because I took into consideration only one perspective, which is our department's perspective in this dashboard. But if I would have added a student's perspective, I think we would have got a wholesome dashboard, which gives you the entire story. So I think that is how I would have introduced my on-campus work. That's great. So notice, folks, what McLean did here. She went into, first of all, she, she did it in quite a concise way. She didn't talk for like 10 minutes straight about what she did. But, you know, what you did really skillfully is you went into enough detail to demonstrate that you were actually very heavily involved in every part of this process. You demonstrated that you understand how to take into account different stakeholders and their needs. You demonstrated that you took into account security issues, which of course, if you're gonna be working for a data center, that, that's important. Um, you demonstrated that you understood how to prioritize. And then in the end, you summed it up by talking about the impact 
of the project. So it shows this holistic, not a superficial, but a holistic uh, understanding of, of the project that you actually worked on and the fact that you actually were very involved in it. So that was a very skillful way of answering it. So as you all think about and prepare for interviews that you may have coming up, think about the stories that you're gonna tell and how you're gonna tell them in a concise way like this that goes into enough detail that shows your involvement personally because that's what they really care about hearing. So thank you for sharing that, McLean, that was great. Yeah, and one thing I, I just wanna add there that stood out to me is it was very clear from that, that you know the, the outcome, that ultimately this was rolled out on the server to all the students. And as a hiring manager, somebody that's evaluating for a role, I'm thinking, ah, oh, wow, somebody really trusted um, your output to the product of your work to actually have it be rolled out at scale. So that means that we're likely to be able to trust you to do the same thing with our users or internal stakeholders and the like. So that's great. Um, we have a, a bunch of questions coming in here. And so I want to start addressing those. And the first few are actually related uh, from Woodkarsha and Asta about finding a mentor. And um, to paraphrase Asta's question, um, uh, can you share how an international student can reach out to people for mentorship because sometimes it doesn't work. And I guess one thing I want to ask you is because to kind of piggyback off of that is you said that sometimes in your initial cold message, which you did a lot of, you would ask for mentorship right away. So how, what was your case? Did you ask for mentorship right away? Did you just ask for a call first and then establish a connection or relationship and then ask for mentorship? What was your plan? I think establish a connection because um mentorship is something that you want it to be two-way because you wouldn't just want someone tell, letting you know that you need to do this next or this is the path for you. You need someone to understand what your process has been, what your likes are, what your dislikes are, what your career goals are. Because only when you have that understood and if the opposite person understands you on that level, only then you could go ahead and uh, I mean, consider that person as a mentor. So I think uh, asking someone to be a mentor at the first stage wouldn't be the best plan. I believe uh, uh, looking closer at where you're working or uh, maybe uh, where you're studying because professors and uh, uh, people who you work with uh, know you very well. And from the perspective that you, you do not have to spend as much time connect, building a connection with them if you believe that uh, it will take a long time for you to maybe connect with someone and finally find a mentor. I found my mentor in the form of my manager with whom I worked for at uh, NYU's assessment and institutional research. I was completely honest with him. I had, I was comfortable enough to share what my career goals are, what I wanted, what organizations I wanted to be in, what kind of things that I did not like in project management or uh, I mean, anything, you should be comfortable enough to speak about what your current goals are, but at the same time, be able to say no, if that is not your interest. So I think finding someone uh, is not that difficult, but you have to look closer rather than taking the step of um, cold messaging and then going on to finding your mentor. So I think first thing is you find someone at your closer network. And if you don't find that, you could maybe sign up for many of the communities which helps you connect to a better, but they are quite competitive. So I, I suggest that you could just uh, look first uh, nearby and then maybe explore the other alternatives. I think that's a, that's a great point, uh, McLean. And for those of you folks that uh, maybe have tried to do outreach before and it's not working, you know, maybe uh, it's to, to, to McLean's point, you know, make sure that you build a connection first. So first ask for some general feedback. So just make sure you customize your message to, uh, to kind of address what McLean said earlier, which is, you know, show them that you actually care, uh, that you, you've read into them, right? They actually care about what they've done. Um, give them a reason to respond. And then once you're on that call, try to develop a connection. And sometimes you can be upfront. And after that, if you can tell that you're vibing, you know, they like you and obviously you like them, uh, you can say, hey, I'm looking for a mentor. Is, 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 this, is this something you'd be open to? You can be that direct or you can be relatively indirect and say, hey, you know, I would really love to continue to learn from your experience. Is it okay if we catch up every once in a while and I can follow up with you, you know, over email or on LinkedIn, whatever, whatever works for you, right? There's different ways to establish that relationship and it does have to be organic, right? You know, you know, you need, it's a give and take, as McLean said, so they want to make sure that they're also getting value from you because you have some skills or because you have an interesting domain expertise or 
uh, or at the very least, they think that they can help you very directly because people that are likely to be a mentor also want to be helpful. And if they think they can't help you, it's probably not going to go very far. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you for that. So those are really good points. So I'm, I'm going to start going here through some of the other questions, uh, not in any particular order, but we will try to get through all of them. Um, so Melina asked, first of all, she thanked you for your for taking the time to speak with us. And she asked, could you talk a little bit about some of the skills and traits that have helped you succeed in your current role? Yes. So with respect to project management, I feel um, I had experience, but if I had not had experience, uh, I believe strategies that I started focusing on would be um, trying to learn a project management tool because um, uh, even if the uh, project management is all about organizing and uh, having structure, it's very important that you know at least one project management tool. So take the liberty of um, signing up for one of the project management tool using their trial version just to know how the platform is and how it aligns with the project management life cycle. With respect to skills, I feel uh, being a good communicator is very important that you listen and look at a problem for multiple perspectives because if you have just one perspective, you cannot be a project manager. It's very important that you sit, give some time for whatever task you have in hand. Uh, look at it from all the perspectives possible and then take a decision because uh, you need to reflect this ability of yours that you take into consideration not just what is good for the project, but also what is good for the team members as well. Uh, the next is, I think, one of the most important is being comfortable with ambiguity because you're going to face this in almost all of the interviews that uh, you would be going through. Uh, a question wherein they will want to know if you're comfortable with ambiguous situation, if things change in the project midway, or you're asked to change the tool, or you're asked to do something which goes uh, away from the traditional project management or asked to do a mixture of traditional and agile project management, how do you respond to it? So maybe having stories with respect to that helps. Uh, and I think uh, data data driven being able to take decisions based on data, not just because you feel that it's, it's a good process. Maybe having data to back those decisions is also very important. I think all these skills and uh, having contemplated on my journey, I had stories to back those up. So I think having a documentation of all of this helps you a lot when you're actually interviewing. It helps you reflect the skills that the opposite person is looking for. I think that's great. And I think, you know, there's a couple of things that are nuanced there that you mentioned that I, some people may be sitting there thinking, oh yeah, I already do that. Like being good at listening, um, being able to look at things from multiple perspectives, but a lot of people think they are and they don't actually practice that, you know, in reality. And so challenge yourself to, um, you know, when you're in a particular situation, really uh, try to put yourself in the shoes of the other person, really try to dig deep into their problems and understand their problems, and see things through their perspective. And one way to test yourself to see if you're doing that or not is, you know, when you're in these situations, are you doing most of the talking? If that's the case, then probably you're not doing enough listening or you're being a little too pres prescriptive uh, without actually collecting data. Mm -hmm. And those are oftentimes people are the best communicators are the ones that are actually able to collect a lot of data and then synthesize it into some kind of action. Mm -hmm. Um, the next question I want to address is, um, I'm going to skip down to Juan Pablo, who asked something interesting. I think you, you, you touched on it a little bit earlier, but if you're asked a question where you're not sure of the answer in an interview, what's the best way to answer it? You know, what's the most graceful or intelligent way that you to, to actually say, I'm not sure, uh, without sounding like you don't know what you're talking about. Okay. I think uh, the best way to answer such a question would be to take some time first and then ask a follow-up question just to understand what the person is actually looking for. So maybe if the question is, um, tell me something about, tell me about a time when you solved a conflict. So you can ask, I mean, uh, uh, is this conflict with respect to uh, the tools that I've been using or maybe uh, conflict with respect to the process. I mean, asking a follow-up question, any follow-up question will actually um, uh, put the interviewer in a situation to explain more. 
So in that situation, you actually get a chance to know more about what the person is looking for. I think that is the first step that you can do. And even if after that you don't get an idea, a complete idea of what you're looking for, uh, you could just let them know that uh, I'm not sure what you're asking for, maybe a little more insight on what is it specifically that you're looking for can help me answer accordingly. I mean, uh, interviewers would never uh, object if you say that you don't know or you do not completely understand what the question is. But I think first step would be to ask a follow-up question um just to understand more or get some more time for yourself to maybe come up with a story that you want to uh, answer for the question asked so i think that would be the first step got it great that's super helpful thank you um christopher asked what would you say are the key aspects of facebook's values and culture that you would advise applicants to keep in mind if they're interested in in standing out I think all values of Facebook are um, extremely important, but uh, the one value that I closely associated with was uh, focus on impact because at um, every role that I had an opportunity to work, I saw to it that I'm able to add something to that team, something unique, something that if I wasn't a part of, I would not be, I mean, they would not have been able to achieve it directly. Uh, so I think that is very important. I mean, again, that for that, you need to spend some time. It can be something as simple as improving the communication process or uh, uh, maybe improving, uh, 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 adding a process improvement into the organization or maybe just creating something that help them understand things better. I think it could be as simple as that, but uh, I think that is very important but also being bold and that is the second uh, value that i aligned with because um, uh, it's very important that when you're part of an organization as facebook which values uh, being bold from the first day itself it's important that you be your authentic self you should not be ashamed of asking questions and you should be comfortable uh, to say no when you're not able to understand things because accepting that you've not understood understood something saves a lot of time rather than just going into it and, and ending up doing it wrong. So I think uh, those are the two values that I most closely associated with, but you could associate with any other, uh, I mean, value that you feel that uh, you've been able to implement throughout your life. But I think being bold and focusing on impact is something that I closely associate myself with. Yeah, and I, you know, I think it's so important to to understand those values. But also, some some folks think that, okay, well, all I need to do is say that I I I care about having impact. But that really doesn't say all that much. Mm -hmm. Everybody everybody says they want to have impact. Demonstrate how you've gone above and beyond in your previous roles and projects to actually have that impact, even when no one asks you to. Yeah. Uh, that's where you really convince someone that you care about that and are not just paying lip service to whatever you think their values are. But that's a that's a really great, uh, really great point. Julia asked, uh, and I wonder, by the way, if Facebook, if any, Facebook or any other interviews that you ever had asked you this question. But Julia is wondering how you would respond to the question, "What is your?" greatest weakness? Have you heard that one come up or do people not really ask that anymore? I mean, I might have been asked this question maybe one or two interviews, but not as many. Uh, but if this question is asked to me, um, I have a hab. I mean, it's something that um, I have been doing it throughout my life and I find it very difficult. Uh, sometimes I focus more on perfection, even when I know that the thing that is in front of me is good enough to go to the next stage. So this weakness uh, does not necessarily show that show that you're not good for the role or something like that. It's not extreme. It shows that you you are uh, I mean a weakness which plays both as a positive, but could be a negative because you're not transitioning faster. So I think that could be the most I mean the, the weakness that I real I believe that I have in me is that. Um, Focusing so much on perfection, I might just end up losing time when I know that the product is good enough and can go to the next stage. So I think this is the weakness that I mentioned in most of my interviews. That's great. Um, I think we have time for one more question. If there are any burning questions, folks, that are top of mind, we have five minutes left here in the session. So please 
drop in, into the chat. Julia also asked, uh, she, you know, she said that she wants to get certified as a CSM and PMP and how she could potentially start her journey, uh, you know, as a student on a budget. I'm curious, are you certified as a PMP? No. How important do you think that is? I haven't, I haven't gotten myself certified because I believe for PMP, you need uh, three years of experience, uh, work experience as a project manager to actually give the PMP examination. And with CSM, I, I haven't, I, I frankly haven't done any of the certifications because I personally don't believe in certifications because I feel it's just a uh, stamp on you that you know things. But I think by volunteering for opportunities, they definitely do help. And I'm sure that people have different perspectives, it's just me. Uh, but uh, for project management, you could do CAPM. Uh, but I mean, it does not require uh, any work experience requirements. It does require academic experience with respect to project management. I think if you uh, pick up a project management class in your uh, school, that should suffice for uh, CAPM certification. Uh, for CSM, I'm not very sure since I haven't really explored uh, CSM certification. Okay, thank you for that. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing a lot too. People that become project managers, there's no requirement necessarily for the certification. I tend to, I'm biased, but I tend to agree 100% with the thing that um, actual project experience, even if it's, you know, work assignments or side projects you've done, uh, goes a long way. Uh, because one you question, can actually speak to stories. One question I do want to uh, ask here before we wrap up, you mentioned uh, a few minutes ago that you, uh, you think it's useful to just get familiar with some project management tools. So you can mm -hmm. talk about that and, and, and use that when you're interviewing. Are there some tools that you recommend people get familiar with? Yes, I think there are many tools now. Uh, you could use monday.com or maybe uh, Jira. Jira is a very good tool. And I am well versed with Jira because uh, in my experience back in India, I worked as an administrator for the project management tool. Uh, yes, I think someone just mentioned. Uh, Asana is yet another tool, which is also good. Uh, they're all very similar with respect to how things work on the platform. So if you know one tool, you could... I mean, you would not take much time to understand the other tool. So I suggest that you focus on just one tool, spend some time on it, understanding how the tool actually is and uh, how we could set up a project right from the initiation to the closure and how you could add, add different tasks, maybe add workflow, add priorities and all, all of those kind of stuffs in a project. I think having the basic understanding of that should do. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, McLean, for all this advice. I think it was incredibly useful. As usual, we learn a lot from these sessions, um, and it's 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 helpful, I think, for us as well. But in general, for the folks on this call, to dispel maybe some of the myths and actually hear from you on how you've been able to accomplish that. Clearly, you've had a very organized process um, for how you not only pursued these opportunities but build up your experience to make sure that you stand out. Uh, for these opportunities as well. And some of these things may sound nuanced uh, or may sound like, okay, well, everybody's doing that, but you guys should keep in mind that actually uh, a lot of applicants are not doing that. They're blindly applying. They're not focusing on building relationships. They're not focusing on doing that deep research about every single stakeholder that you're going to be interviewing with uh, uh, along the way and collecting data throughout the interview process to make sure that you are thinking about things intelligently throughout it. So um, so I think that's really, really helpful. And if you put even a few of these things into practice, guaranteed you're going to get better results. So thank you so much for, for sharing that with us and joining us today. Just a, a few quick announcements here, folks, as we wrap up for the day. Uh, a lot of folks have messaged me asking if they're going to get access to this recording. Yes, you will. All we, we ask is that you fill out a quick survey to give us your feedback on today's session. We read all of the survey responses and we really appreciate that. Uh, if you can do that, Kristen and our team is going to go ahead and drop those links into the chat if you want to do that now. It'll take about a minute. Um, again, our application deadline is coming up for our 8 Week Technology Accelerator, Acceleration Program if you're interested in learning from experts uh, just like McLean in how to actually advance your career in tech. Go ahead and go to school forward slash apply. And uh, last and not, but not least, if you want to hear about these events ahead of time, you can follow us on Instagram and follow us on LinkedIn to make sure you get notified about them. And next week, we'd love for you to join us. Same exact time, same day of the week. 
uh, with Sean Jackson, director of product from Audible. So again, we have a bunch of events coming up over the next few weeks. And the next one will be uh, focused on product management from a gentleman that is now at Audible, which is owned by Amazon, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but again, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. Thanks again, McQueen. Really good to see you. Thank you for answering all these questions. It's, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to be here. Please Thank feel free to connect me on LinkedIn for any questions that you have. Yeah, folks, there you go. Do, do, do what McLean did, add her on LinkedIn. If you send her a nice personalized relevant message, <laughs> I'm sure she'll reply. Uh, but thank you folks for coming. Thank you so much for the great lessons you share with us here today, McLean. Thank you so much. Have a good day, everyone. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.